Welcome to this week's episode of Pets and Rent. Today we are going to talk about the one new autopilot device preparation, aka autopilot version 2 future, that has been missing since the moment APDP went GA general available. It's a future everyone has been asking for, well, at least I am. That future is called device association, aka device linking. It's a real built-in tenant association that happens before the user signs in to start the autopilot device preparation enrollment. And once you understand what this future is meant to do, you maybe want to start using APDP as well. So, Let's start at the moment everything started to make sense. But before we do, don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's move on. Because we're going to talk about the Ignite slide that nobody talked about. Except me. This year at Ignite, to be precise, d- during the Intune keynote session, Microsoft showed a wonderful neat slide that is called what's new for Windows. If we look at that slide, we notice that it contained three big key investments. Provision, get current, and stay compliant. We all love to stay compliant, right? But the speaker walked through almost everything on that slide. He talked about Windows recovery. He talked about Microsoft Windows backup. He even talked about maintenance windows. And also something called app inventory, and also installer scripts. So he, he almost covered any of everything that was in that slide, except one future. It wasn't even mentioned that future is called Autopilot Device Association. It was sitting there right in the provisioning row. Everyone could see it, I saw it, but somehow it was completely ignored. Well. It feels like it was being ignored. And that was the moment I passed the video and stared at his name, Autopilot Device Association. Because in my opinion, Microsoft doesn't put something on a slide like that unless it matters. If they skip talking about it, Well, it usually means the future exists, but the whole system, the the backend around it is 100% ready yet. And that term, device association, fits directly into the gap APDP has been stuck in since the beginning. So to learn why that gap needs to be filled, we need to rewind a bit and first examine what Autopilot version 1 is and what it does. In my opinion, the classic Autopilot APV1, as you can see here, is all about skipping the out-of-box experience screens, the questions. Nothing more, nothing less. Well, it also decides if the enrolling user becomes a standard user or not. So he becomes an admin on a device, which we don't want. But again, the main purpose of Autopilot V1 is OOP control, the out-of-box experience control, configuring the out-of-box settings to skip those questions we get. Autopilot can only skip those out-of-box experience screens because the device is known to the service before it boots. Well, it boots in the moment the device switches out to the internet. Well, we get to that part later on. But that only happens, or that happens, the pre-registering of the device only happens when we upload the hardware hash. So once the hardware hash has been uploaded and when the device gets internet access, it instantly contacts the autopilot service, the zero touch deployment service. It doesn't really send the hardware hash, but the same kind of values that are in the hardware hash to to the service to prove its identity. That service verifies that hardware token and it responds with the autopilot profile. 
that profile, that autopilot profile, as you can see here as well, contains the instructions for the out-of-box experience to skip all those screens. So with the out-of-box experience settings, you can skip the region, the keyboard questions. You get no privacy questions. You can even set up a device naming setting to ensure your device gets the proper name during enrollment, which we all want. And I guess the most important thing, the no personal or corporate question, because that's so bad on a pro device. And all of those out of box experience screens are skipped because Autopilot has an early device identity. And that's exactly what Autopilot device preparation APV2 never had. So let's zoom into that one as well. But before we do, we first need to explain a little bit why Autopilot device preparation was invented, well invented, created, because APDP didn't exist because Autopilot was broken, even though some people occasionally feel like it is, but again, it's not really Autopilot broken, just another service that you use when enrolling a device with Autopilot. Well, APDP only exists because the GCC High customers, they just weren't allowed to use hardware as. They need a provisioning model without a pre-registered device identity. So APDP centered the workflow around the user instead of the device. But that shift from device to user identity created a fundamental problem. When a new device boots, APDP isn't involved yet. The, the device behaves like an unmanaged personal, which it is, Windows installation, Windows device. And with it, you get every single out-of-box experience question and page like a personal device gets, which is weird, right? So you, on an APDP device, you get all the default questions, device naming, personal, corporate, corporate privacy, keyboard. And why? because APDP only kicks in after the user signs in, which is far too late to change anything that already happened inside the out-of-box experience. And I guess there was another assumption I need to clarify because I believe, I think Microsoft expected all devices to ship as Windows Enterprise, which they don't, because Enterprise can suppress certain out-of-box appearance questions and screens I just showed you. But that's not how things work in the real world. Devices are shipped as Windows Pro Professional. They are getting enrolled into Intune when enrolling with Autopilot. From there on, the subscription activation will upgrade them to Enterprise only after the user signs in. So, AP DP timeline looks like this. The out of box experience question of uh, experience runs while the device is still on pro, when it's professional. APDP activates or kicks in after the user logs in. And the enterprise upgrade happens after that. By that point, you've already clicked through all the out of box, out of box experience Oh my, questions APDP should have handled in the first place. Everything APDP needs to influence has already happened by the time APDP kicks in. But then something else appeared. Something that hinted APDP was meant to be more. So let's find out what was happening in the Windows Insider builds, shall we? After Ignite, or maybe long before, I installed the latest Windows Insider preview build. And noticing device association on that Ignite slide, I want to know if something was hidden inside out of box experience. So to find out, I pressed the Windows logo five times during the setup, the same button you need to press when you want to execute Autopilot pre-provisioning. And there it was, 
device association. This was the moment everything started falling into place. Inside that device association menu was another magical thing, an export button. And pressing that export button generated a new CSV. And opening that CSV showed the basic stuff, the serial number, manufacturer, but something more interesting was also there, a base 64 encoded blob. And it's very easy to decode it. So decoding that blob revealed a complete device link structure containing TPM bound identity information. This wasn't random junk. This was the real identity payload capable of representing a tenant bound device. And exactly at that moment, I had a strong suspicion about where Microsoft is going to store this device link marker. So I executed a PowerShell script from Niaus to check the UAV variables. And it's the same approach I could use to find the autopilot CDD marker, the one that was being used for remedi remediation. If something happened with the hardware hash, the, that marker could remediate it, which it didn't, but that's a different story. But looking at the, the UAV, there it was, a new foreign firmware entry called autopilot device link, device association. It was a hidden marker written directly into the UAV. And it survives a reboot. It survives a device reset. And it's a marker that can be read by Windows before Windows even loads. And I guess it's the marker, the device link marker that finally gives APDP the early device identity it has been missing since it went general available. Once this device link marker exists, out of box experience no longer needs to rely on a user signing in. Well, you still need to sign in, of course, to kick off autopilot device preparation. But with that device identity marker, Windows can now authenticate and fetch or reach out to the service before APDP kicks in. This leads to the obvious next question. What exactly will Windows download once this early identity is available? And that answer explains almost everything. Sometime before the Ignite, annou Ignite announcement, while exploring the graph, exploring graph changes, I stumbled upon across something unusual a full set of out-of-box experience configuration endpoints that didn't belong to a Autopilot version one. And it seems they were clearly built for APDP, even the name says it all. And there were graph services for device naming, branding, language, local region settings. It was the complete out-of-box experience pipeline that was been missing for APDP in the first place. And on the client side, inside the cloud experience host, Microsoft had quietly added the new device tagging logic. So device tagging, device association, device linking, how many names do you want? But inside that function, it was another function. The get device link info that gathered the hardware details and bundled them into a JSON payload. The exact same device link data uh, that is shown in the uh, CSV. So everything was already in place. The graph out of box experience settings we desperately needed, the client tagging logic, the device link payload with the identity, and the UEFI marker. It, it was almost a complete picture. But again, none of it could work without that one thing, the early device identity. And device association is that missing component. By the looks of it, it will connect the UAV device link to the graph out of the box experience settings we noticed. 
in my belief, it will give APDP a way to identify the device before the out-of-box experience question. And it finally allows APDP to, to control the first boot experience, the same way Autopilot always did. The out-of-box experience settings can now be applied before the user signs in. The device naming, everything, everything that felt important or was important for Autopilot version 1 is now shown in Autopilot version 2 with device association. And once the backend is ready, APDP will finally behave the way it was supposed to, to, to do. And with it, I can now finally call it Autopilot because as I was mentioning in the beginning, Autopilot was all about skipping the out-of-box experience questions. And with the device association, APDP will get the same functionality. So I can finally call it Autopilot device preparation. So a quick summary then. Device association is the missing piece. It fills the exact gap APDP has been stuck with since it went general available. Even though Microsoft didn't discuss it at Ignite, the signs are already visible in the Windows Insider builds, inside the CSV export, inside the Base64 device link data, and inside the UAV itself. The moment device association shows up in Intune, I will publish the complete reverse engineered flow from Windows to the autopilot service and back. So, see you next time. And oh, don't forget, like and subscribe. See you next time. Join over 8,000 organizations who trust Patch My PC to keep more than 25 million devices up to date. It's secure, automatic, and built to scale. See for yourself. Book a live demo with a Patch My PC engineer or start your free trial.